Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now before this Noctua cooler sat atop my i5 12400F, it spent most of its life inside an old pre-built I bought online for not very much money. Since purchasing the necessary brackets and fixing it to my socket 1700 motherboard, I've been really pleased with the temperatures as well as the low noise levels. That got me thinking about doing something silly. What would happen if I removed the CPU fan? Passive cooling is nothing new and there are far bulkier coolers available that are designed for fanless use. That said, I'd also suggest making sure your enclosure has a couple of intake and exhaust fans if you want to go down that road. My setup is unconventional in the way that it's just two pieces of metal with the components screwed to it. As someone who is always testing different computer parts, an open test bench is far more convenient for me, but it means I don't have any system fans or fancy cooling. My ambient room temperature usually hovers around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. It's not uncommon for the i5 to exceed 60 degrees when editing or running a particularly CPU intensive program, but in games like Cyberpunk here, it will often sit at less than this. Here are my recorded minimum and maximum temps from six hours of daily system use with the fan in place. Everyone's PC is of course unique in terms of specs, cooling and the temperature of the room it sits in, so my results won't apply to any of you watching. That said, I hope you find this video interesting nonetheless, and I can't say don't try this at home because I'm not your dad, but it's not advisable unless you are building a system specifically with passive cooling in mind, in which case you'd probably be using components better suited to that purpose. I'm just acting on part curiosity and part stupidity today. I certainly wouldn't try this with any stock coolers though. After removing the Noctua fan, I then jumped into Cinebench R20 again and found that after running the multi-core test, the processor topped out at 72 degrees. It still hit its 4 GHz all-core boost and the smell of warm metal started to fill my nostrils. Delicious. Rendering a video in DaVinci Resolve didn't push the temperatures any higher than this, but a minute's worth of rendering doesn't stress the CPU long enough to get that hot. Now I know for a fact that a longer term CPU stress test would definitely make this thing hit 100 degrees before I could say, bloody hell, that's a bit warm, which is British slang for anything up to roughly a thousand degrees. At this point, I was a few hours in and doing a little bit of everything didn't push this chip to unsafe or severely uncomfortable temperatures, uncomfortable temperatures I was trying to say there, which was quite surprising. I then played GTA 5 for about an hour, and while there was some stutter, this was because we were hitting really high frame rates, frame rates that make the game engine panic a little bit. There were no performance problems caused by heat or, by an extension of that, throttling. As the afternoon drew to a close, I fired up something a little more CPU intensive, Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, and this is where things got a little toasty. My level of concern had elevated from a blank expression to a slightly raised eyebrow. The i5 hit 95 degrees here, but the all-boost clock remained at 4 GHz, so I carried on playing for about half an hour internally and continuously apologising to my i5, as well as Intel who kindly sent this to me in the first place. Sorry. Performance remained unaffected though, and so I left the game on pause while I went in the other room for some dinner. Chicken salad for anyone wondering. After I returned, I decided to see if I could play Battlefield 5 under these conditions. The room was cooling down a bit as the sun slowly started dipping below the adjacent rooftops, and this would certainly help in knocking a few degrees off of our i5, right? Well, what you're seeing here should answer that question. I got as far as loading a team deathmatch before the CPU hit 100 degrees and the game froze, so instead I've put up this artist's impression of the last thing I saw before I hurriedly switched off my PC at the plug. The ever strengthening scent of burning metal wasn't too out of place now. Battlefield, now with realistic graphics and smells. Thus concludes my fanless adventure and this video. Thank you very much for watching. Wasn't the best idea I've ever had, but curiosity got the better of me today, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.